Hello Prison Architects, my name is Tom and in this video I'll provide you with um, a small tutorial of my Prison Architect cell block calculator application. A long name for a small application, but there you have it. So Prison Architect is a game that is currently available on Steam in one of their early access programs, which means that the game is not finished yet, but can still play it. And in this particular game you run a prison and you have to build a prison with um, everything that comes along and everything you need. So you'll build prison blocks and or cell blocks and kitchens and storage areas and uh, yards and all kinds of stuff. These different things need rooms and walls and stuff. And to actually lay out these things, um, you sometimes build yourself sort of into a corner or just um, kind of regret doing certain things because your buildings might not fit your actual needs. And this application tries to remedy that and allows you to experiment with uh, buildings and layouts and stuff like that uh, before you actually do it and commit to it in game. Um, because building cell blocks or any buildings uh, in the game um, costs money and especially at least that's what I found during the early hours of the game you don't really have a lot of money um, and you need to kind of expand your prison all the time to accommodate uh, more and more prisoners so this application allows you to kind of play around with uh, with foundations and buildings and rooms and objects and stuff like that. And it simply works by, well, you can enter uh, right here in these two fields, you can enter the width and height of your cell block. And there are two different ways you can calculate or render a cell block in this application. You can do it based on width and height, or you can base it on uh, the desired number of rooms or the number of rooms you want and clicking this button down here actually calculates or renders the cell block depending on the width and height so if I click this button you can see that right here it actually renders uh, a cell block and these I hope you can see it but these are kind of red a colored uh, cells right here indicating all the uh, different cells in, in my cell block. And of course we have walls as well and unused space. These light gray tiles are unused space. So in this case um, it's like okay well I would probably put a door up here and put doors here to allow prisoners to actually get access to each individual cell. And the other rendering type or uh, mechanism is based on the number of rooms. And if I click this button, it will calculate based on the desired number of rooms, like it says down here. Um, and now it's just warning me that it will actually overwrite my current block, but that's okay. In this case, you can see it actually changed the width of the cell block, because rendering with this particular button or this particular method means that well you don't really care about the size of the building you're just saying okay I want 36 rooms and in this particular case I want six rooms per row I could change this to eight for example and render the block again and you could see that okay well now my block is even wider and well there are some rooms missing but that's because I chose to have 36 rooms so now there are actually 36 individual rooms, um, and this is number 36. So it's kind of missing four, but if I went back up here and put in 40, it should fill out the entire block, like so. So that's kind of like the basic two methods of rendering your block. And why have I included these two methods? Well, sometimes you just, uh, for the last method, you're just interested in getting a good number of cells. 
or rooms in your cell blocks. Just gonna grab some coffee. And other times you might have limited space for your cell blocks. So um, because you might be adding another block to your uh, prison that needs to fit perhaps in between other buildings or somewhere where you say well I only have 20 by 20 tiles so I only have this space so what can I do with it you know um, so those are two different ways of, um, of um, rendering your cell block now new in this um, in this version, um, this is a new version of the calculator that I just released. And in this version, you can actually specify what the default room type should be. So right now, these are individual cells, but I could also say, well, I want a block filled with offices. Um, so if I do another calculation, well, it actually says that my office or an office needs to at least be 4x4. Four um, which I actually specify with these two fields. You can see there is a room width and a room height. So if I put in 4x4 four four and try another calculation, you can see that, oh, now these are actually offices. Um, and the layout has kind of changed because there isn't room for as many rooms um, in, in this current cell block. But if I try the other rendering method, um, you can see that now I actually have a large block with a lot of offices, more offices than I actually need, but once you've kind of rendered the um, the block, you can customize it yourself afterwards. You can add objects, you can change room types, and you can remove walls and add walls and add materials and stuff like that. And we'll get into that in a bit, but so, and Kind of like the same goes for if I go back to cells, I can say, well, I actually want my cells to be bigger than the uh, default required size. A cell needs to be at least 2 by 3 or 3 by 2 but you can actually just make them bigger if you want to. If you plan on having a lot of space for your prisoners or if you want to put some more stuff into your rooms um, besides the basic required bed and toilet, um, you can do so. And you can also, if you want to, if you want to say, well, I just want a blank space. I just want a big block where I can just do everything myself. I don't want any rooms or any walls filled in. Well, you can just, for example, put in, say, I want one room, but I want that particular room to be 40 by 40. And I don't want any uh, room type in it. You can do so like that. Now you just have like a blank canvas that you can change um, if you want to. But um, let's get back to the different options you have. Um, I'm just going to go back to the default 2x3 room size and uh, let's put in some cells like so. Actually let's change that to 24 rooms just to have it fit nicely, like so. Now the uh, next options you have available is to put in um, some horizontal space and vertical space. And you actually have four fields because the first two are space that gets added after or following an odd numbered cell. Um, and the other two or remaining to gets added after an even numbered cell. So if I just remove the walls around the rooms like so, um, you can actually see, it might be slightly hard to see, but um, I actually have my first room here and this is, well, an odd numbered cell. So following that is three spaces uh, ver uh, horizontally, sorry, like it's, it's specified here. Then I get another cell, and that's an even numbered cell, so following that is just a single space, and then another odd numbered cell with three spaces, etc., etc. And as you can see, once I put 
walls back in? Well, this is obviously to allow you to, for example, say, well, people need to have access to these cells, so I need some sort of hallway in between them. Um, if I just go back to actually having or change the odd horizontal space to one and re-render, you can see that, okay, well, now it's just a bunch of cells with walls between them, but um, there's no way um, to get access to these cells uh, deep within the cell block. I mean, obviously, you could plan on creating doors, allowing prisoners or staff or whoever to actually access uh, the inner cells, but I don't necessarily think that might be e efficient. Um, I haven't tried it, uh, I must say, so I don't know. Um, that's, I guess that's one of the nice things about uh, Prison Architect, is that it allows for you to experiment with a lot of things. But this is not how I typically would create my cell blocks. Um, so, having these space um, different amounts of space allows you to do stuff like this. So having these um, different amounts of space allows you to do stuff like this. And there's, um, there's some, some neat things you can do with this. For example, if I change the, for example, the even vertical space to 3 um, and re-render, you can kind of see, well, you can also create um, horizontal hallways if you want to. Um, and you can even, let's actually change the number of rooms to, let's say, 32. Um, do stuff like this and say, well, I actually want to have these different cells, but also perhaps want to have something in between, or just a large hallway or something um, in between. Um, your your cells. So that's how the the horizontal and vertical space uh, works. And on a similar note, you also have what I call padding, and it's kind of like the same thing except that the padding. Well, in this case, you have four values available for padding, and there's one for the top, there's one for the right, the bottom, and the left. And the padding simply moves your cells, or actually creates unused space at the top, at the right, at the bottom, and at the left of your cell block. So if I, for example, put in a padding of 4 at the top, you can see that, well, it increased the size of my block to accommodate for these 4 tiles of unused space at the top. And if I put in, well, let's say a top padding of 4 at the top, then 2 at the right, 3 at the bottom, and 4 on the left, you can kind of see what the padding is all about. As you can see, there's one tile of free space at the top, 2 on the right, 3 at the bottom, and 4 on the left. So, if you want to, for example, have a cell block that is surrounded by a hallway, uh, for guards to patrol or something like that. You could just put in a padding of, for example, three on every side, and you'd end up with something like this, um, which would kind of fit your cells nightly in the uh, nicely in the center and then have unused space around them. Um, what I personally, or at least in the last couple of games, what I've done is actually have padding typically at the bottom like so, and then use the space down here to have a shower, for example, allowing each individual cell block to have its own shower so that everyone in each cell block will actually um, have a place to shower. Because that's one of the first mistakes I did, I think, in the game, was to create a central shower where everyone, once it's morning and everyone has to go into the shower, um, there's not enough uh, shower heads for everyone, and people get mad, and, you know, soon you'd have a riot on your hands. Um, apparently, prisoners get really pissed off if they can't shower, or 
uh, get to a toilet and stuff like that. So that's what I've been been doing for at least the last couple of games. Now I kind of um, showed you this particular setting down here, which means that you can actually have the game include walls surrounding your cells, or you can remove um, the walls. Um, and um, that's another thing I found is that, well, cell blocks don't necessarily need walls. Um, so if I go back out to the spacing here and just put in one for each of the four um, values, well, I've created many cell blocks like, that look like this where there are no walls, just a bunch of rooms next to each other. Um, and that actually works pretty well. I found. Um, it feels much less like a prison, I agree, but it's certainly a viable way to build um, a cell block, for example. And again, you can have a shower at the bottom if you want to. And one of the reasons why I decided to try out this layout for a cell block was because, well, walls are actually kind of expensive. And um, as you can see, if I put back in the walls, I think they're thirty dollars per tile, so right here you actually have a lot of money going into simply uh, dividing each cell by a wall. So if you want to save some money, you can try out that um, this kind of layout. But uh, once again, yeah, feels le less like a prison, but uh, it's a viable approach, definitely. And uh, right here you have a setting that actually simply includes or specifies whether you want the outside concrete wall or not. So if I um, uncheck this um, this setting right here, there's simply no border um, around your block. Now, as you may have noticed, as I've rendered these uh, different foundations and cell blocks, there is an indication right here of the actual price it'll cost. And, uh, well, each tile in a foundation currently costs $10, and there's actually the value specified right here. So if they, the developers change it in an, uh, another upcoming version, you can actually change it right here yourself. But the default is set to 10, which is also the same, at least currently, um, in, as in the game. And uh, once you calculate the foundation, it'll actually tell you here what the base foundation will cost. And um, you also have an opportunity to actually specify the cost of any objects you want to put into each room. In this case, I'm building a cell block, a uh, block filled with cells, and I know that in each cell you must have at least a bed and a toilet and those objects um, comes down to a total cost of three hundred dollars and you could put in that number right here and say well I know that each of my room requires at least three hundred dollars worth of objects and you can do another recalculation and now it actually specifies well for the foundation you need to pay this much, but for the rooms, you actually, or the objects going into the rooms, you need this much. So right now, for a cell block of this size with this many rooms, I need almost 14,000 to be able to fully equip it. Um, currently, I don't have any way of um, planning out for water and electricity. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but obviously that's going to be some additional cost you need to calculate into the total cost of your buildings. Um, but uh, at least this gives you an idea of how much um, the default or the base cost will be. Now, once you've uh, rendered a cell block like this, uh, let me just go back to include the walls and add the some spacing right here. Um, once you've rendered a cell block this, like this, you can actually customize it yourself. 
you can add objects and materials and remove walls and add doors and stuff like that. And that's what these three buttons are for. Kind of like in the game, these provide you with different pages uh, filled with different, different types of, uh, well, materials, rooms, and objects. Um, before we get into that, well, I just want to mention the tile size, because right here you can actually change how big each tile in this application is. And uh, you need to decide before you render, uh, because as you can see, nothing happens if I click these. But uh, if I re-render uh, my cell block, you can see, okay, now it's, it's the same cell block, but it's just much bigger, allowing you to see slightly easier what's going on and obviously if you plan on making really big uh, cell blocks you might want to go for the small tile size but um, as you can also see things get pretty small with that tile size so for a cell block of this size I guess the even larger tile size might be more suitable and uh, well going down here uh, to these three buttons for example I can click the rooms and say well I also need an office and once you pick that well not sure if you can see it but right here there's kind of like a build indication and that has a green tile inside of it indicating that you're now painting uh, or building an office so if I just simply click my block here you can see I'm now painting with these green tiles changing these cells into offices and offices can't actually be two by three like these um, there's no um, once you're doing stuff manually it won't say well this office won't work because it's not big enough um, but I could for example simply paint over the wall right here and say well I won't Actually, I want just one big office, like so, and you can even just paint over the entire thing and go back into, well, go into the materials, select brick wall, and then close up this, and you have a nice office right here. And the objects uh, page, which isn't really pretty at the moment, it's functional, but not pretty. You can select, for example, a staff door press any key to rotate the object uh, right here just press any key and the object will rotate like in the game and you can put in some doors and um, let's put some doors into the outer walls as well and let's see add a jail door to some of these cells like so and they need some beds good prisoners and some toilets rotate that rotate it twice like so and of course an office isn't an office without a desk a chair and a filing cabinet and I've tried to line up all the buttons and the materials inside these pages the same way as in the game so for example the order of these rooms on this particular page is the same as it is in game hopefully allowing you to easier find it and of course I've re reused uh, many of the icons that I used in the game as well and well once you start to add objects um, you can actually see that it has cleared the cost of rooms that you got from this setting down here because now you're actually changing that you're saying that well I, I want to manually add all this stuff myself so now it's actually adding a cost to the objects instead um, saying that well you bought a bunch of um, doors, a desk, a chair, some beds and toilets and that comes to a total of this. But if I'm not actually going to fill out these cells with uh, objects, um, well, I'm not going to 
be built for them, so to speak. Um, so if I go back to re-rendering basic cell block, you can see that the rooms now say, well, 9600. Um, but if I go into the objects and start to add beds, you can see that the rooms, costs of rooms, have been reduced to zero, but it's now actually counting the actual number of, uh, the, the actual cost of the objects I'm adding instead. So it's kind of like this is now a manual mode and you've decided to uh, do your own decoration instead of having this kind of like pre-thought out um, idea of what your rooms will actually cost. And of course this also allows you to customize your cells. Um, for example, I might say, well, I actually want these particular two cells to be bigger than the rest. And I want them to be kind of like luxury cells. Let's add some toilets and, well, for some luxury, you probably want Hmm, TV, for example. In each cell, you might even include personal phone booth. Just for the heck of it. And, let's see. How about a bookshelf as well, for some... Recreation, or whatever, and add some doors and stuff, so... You can fully customize everything uh, once you've uh, rendered um, a sub-block. And, well, regarding the objects, I've also actually included both the capacitor, the power station, and the water pump into the objects page, even though they aren't actually part of that in the game. But since these are objects you can also place inside of buildings, um, I just included them to allow you to plan for uh, having a cell block or anything like that which might include um, a power station or a water pump and stuff like that. And kind of like the same goes with the materials. Um, the materials I've included, at least in this version, are only available uh, inside rooms. So there are some materials that are only usable on the outside. Um, and, well, I've not included them because currently this is a cell block calculator, so this is all based on a foundation, kind of like being inside. Um, but I might actually change the application at one point to just be, well, here you have this space, and you can fill it out with foundations or just outside stuff, a yard, because at the moment you can actually do you can actually create a yard uh, actually even on the inside with this, which I don't think you can actually do in game but it's kinda like it's right now the applications kinda hovering about it's not only inside and it's not allowing you to be completely on the outside um, if you understand what I mean but uh, I might change that um, simply to have or at least allow you to do anything and I don't think it requires a lot of change, to be honest, but I just, at least for a good amount of time, have been focused on creating, like, this block calculator based on foundations, but um, I might change that. So, there you have it. I guess that's the, um, that's the most important parts of uh, this application. Of course, inside the materials, you also have uh, a demolish option, which just basically allows you to remove anything you've done, kind of like just an eraser. And if you want to remove objects, just click on them again, and you can actually see that it's reducing the cost as I do so. And okay, you don't want this bet? Okay, you get 100 or 200 back um, and stuff. So it's fairly e easy to use, um, I think. And of course, if you're painting rooms, for example, you can simply 
click on your foundation, hold down the mouse button and just paint. Uh, there's no fill option yet, so you can't, for example, I just want all this gray hallway to be filled with this wooden floor. Um, there's no fill option yet, so you have to kind of like manually paint it. But, um, yeah. As I said, I think those are the uh, most important um, aspects of, uh, of this application. Of course, if you have any questions or if you have any feedback, whether it's positive or negative, feel free to leave a comment. You can also get in touch with me uh, by email or by replying to one of the threads I made on the Steam forums or on the actual uh, developer forums. Um, and I'd love to hear some feedback. What do you think of this application? Um, not only the good feedback, like, hey, this is a nice application, or whatever. Um, also the bad stuff. I mean, if there's something you don't feel is working right, or if you find a bug or something, I'd love to hear about it. So I can actually improve this, um, this application. Um, it's supposed to be easy to use, and kind of like feel, I guess, natural. Um, I don't think the... I'm hoping that this video in itself might be proof of that, that the lear learning curve is fairly small in the sense that it's... once you get a hang of all of these different values and things like that, well, it actually makes sense and it, it becomes easy to use. It isn't like filled with magic numbers or settings that just changes everything completely um, but um, if you think if you have any ideas for the application or anything like that um, feel free to leave a comment so that um, was I guess a small tutorial of the second version of my cell block calculator um, not sure where it's gonna go from here because I mean Perhaps I'm just going to finish up the, uh, well, there's still some unfinished things here and there. For example, right now you actually have the ability to, with this button right here, resize the block. And if I change my block width to 34, all my objects disappear. It actually increases the size of my block, and I can also go the other way, say I want a smaller block. Um, and it's currently warning me that it'll remove tiles. I mean, some of my tiles will disappear. That's okay. So, this is still a function you can use, but I'd certainly recommend using it before going into all this manually adding of stuff, because all your objects will disappear, because I haven't implemented uh, a function that kind of copies that onto your new foundation, because this is kind of like a new foundation. It might look like the old, or the same, but it's actually a new instance of a new cell block. Kind of technical stuff, but... but um, So this is, for example, not completely finished, or at least how you would expect it to work. Um, so, But um, there's small stuff like that, things that aren't fully implemented, or, you know, there might still be some bugs here and there. Uh, but um, if you find any, um, please let me know. And I think that um, that concludes this um, small tutorial of uh, my Prison Architect Cell Block Calculator application. So, um, thanks for watching, and uh, well, hope you enjoy Prison Architect and perhaps even the Cell Block Calculator. Um, take care, and see you soon.